by the organizers of this dialogue. I am certain that the policy practitioners and scholars present here or participating virtually will not only discuss Pakistan's security vision, but also formulate ideas to guide us on how best to tackle Pakistan's future security challenges. I would like to appreciate the National Security Division for identifying the need for Pakistan to have its own security dialogue. I commend the NSD and the Advisory Board for putting together the first iteration of this dialogue. I hope this trend of integrating intellectual input into policy making continues to grow. Ladies and gentlemen, it is almost universally acknowledged fact that the contemporary concept of national security is not only about protecting a country from internal and external threat, but also providing conducive environment in which aspirations of human security, national progress and development could be realized. Surely it is not solely a function of the armed forces anymore. National security in the age of globalization, information and connectivity has now become an all-encompassing notion wherein besides various elements of national power, global and regional environments also play a profound role. National security is thus multi-layered, outer layered being the exogenous factors of global and regional environment and the inner layer being the endogenous factors of internal, internal peace, stability and developmental orientation. A nation at peace and a region in harmony are thus essential prerequisite for attainment of national security in the true spirit. <clears throat> no national leader of today can ignore these facts. I also firmly believe that no single nation in isolation can perceive and further its quest for security as every single issue and security dilemma faced by today's world is intimately linked with global and regional dynamics. Whether it be human security, extremism, human rights, environmental hazards, economic security or pandemic, responding in silos is no more an option. Ladies and gentlemen, the world has seen ravages of world war and cold war, wherein polarization and neglect of virtues blighted human future and brought catastrophic consequences for humanity. On the contrary, we have witnessed how multilateral rule-based platforms contributed towards good of mankind. Today we face the similar choices, whether to stay in the acrimony and toxicity of the past, continue promoting conflict and get into another vicious cycle of war, disease and destruction, or to move ahead, bring the dividends of our technological and scientific advancement to our people and usher in a new era of peace and prosperity. We must not forget the desire was historically decisive and stimulus for grabbing more, leading to haves and have-nots. History has taught us that the way ahead has always been through an interconnected, interdependent and collective sense of security. Today, the leading drivers of change in the world are demography, economy and technology. However, one issue which remains central to this concept is economic security and cooperation. Frayed relations between various power centers of global and uh, various power centers of the globe and boomerang boomeranging of competing alliances can bring nothing but another stint of Cold War. It is naive to apply the failed solution of yesteryears to the challenge of today and tomorrow. It is important for the world that the leading global players must reach a stable equilibrium in their relations through convergence instead of divergence. In this environment, developing countries like Pakistan today faces multi-dimensional challenges which cannot be navigated single-handedly. Similar situation is confronted by other countries in our region as well. Therefore, we all require a multilateral global and regional approach and cooperation to overcome these challenges. Dear participants, you are well aware that South Asia is home to one quarter of the world's population. However, despite tremendous human, and resource, human resource and potential, the unsettled disputes are dragging this region back to the swamps of poverty and underdevelopment. It is saddening to know that even today it is amongst the least integrated regions of the world in terms of trade, infrastructure, water and energy cooperation. 
On top of it, despite being one of the most impoverished regions of the world, we end up spending a lot of our, a lot of our money on defense, which naturally comes at the expense of human development. Pakistan has been one of the few countries which, despite the rising security challenges, has resisted the temptation of involving itself in an arm race. Our defense expenditure have rather reduced instead of increasing. This is not an easy undertaking, especially once you live in a hostile and unstable neighborhood. But having said that, let me say profoundly that we are ready to improve our environment by resolving all our outstanding issues with our neighbors through dialogue in a dignified and peaceful manner. However, it is important to state that this choice is deliberate and based on rationality and not as a result of any pressure. In our sincere desire to recast Pakistan's image as a peace-living nation and as a useful member of international community, our leadership's vision is, alhamdulillah, transformational in this regard. We have learned from, we have learned from the past to evolve and are willing to move ahead towards a new future. However, all this is contingent upon reciprocity. Ladies and gentlemen, the world knows that we are a geostrategically place to be a bridge between civilization and connecting conduit between the regional economies. We are a nation of significance due to our large and enterprising demography, fertile soil and adequate logistic infrastructure. We intend to leverage our vital geostrategic location for our own regional and global benefit. Our robust role in current quest for peace in Afghanistan is proof of our goodwill and understanding of our global and moral obligations. Our close collaboration and crucial support for peace process has led us, led to the historic agreement between Taliban and US and paved the way for intra-Afghan dialogue. We will continue to emphasize on a sustained and inclusive peace process for the betterment of people of Afghanistan and regional peace. Moreover, besides offering our all-out support to our Afghanistan peace process, we have also undertaken unprecedented steps to enhance Afghanistan's trade and connectivity by re-energizing Afghan-Pakistan transit trade agreement and also providing access to Afghanistan to export her goods to India. Improving economic and trade environment along Pak Afghan border by establishing border markets and development of infrastructure. Being part of energy and trade corridor binding Central, South and West Asia through land routes and inviting Afghanistan to be part of CPAC. Dear participants, stable Indo-Pakistan relation is a key to unlock the untapped potential of South and Central Asia by ensuring connectivity between East and West Asia. The potential, however, has forever remained hostage to the disputes and issues between two nuclear neighbors. Kashmir dispute is obviously at the heart of this problem. It is important to understand that without the resolution of Kashmir dispute through peaceful means, process of subcontinental reproachment will always remain susceptible to derailment due to politically motivated bellicosity. <clears throat> However, we feel that the time is, it is time to bury the past and move forward. But for resumption of peaceful process or meaningful dialogue, our neighbor will have to create conducive environment, particularly in Indian occupied Kashmir. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are a nation of 207 million with tremendous geoeconomic potential. In order to carve a pr promising future for our people, it is important for us to embark upon a solid economic roadmap backed up by infrastructural development and regional integration. Our choices with respect to the same have been clear and explicit. This geoeconomic vision is centered around four pillars. One, moving towards a lasting and enduring peace within and outside. Two, non-interference of any kind in the internal affairs of our neighboring and regional countries. Three, boosting intra-regional trade and connectivity. Four, bringing sustainable development and prosperity through establishment of investment and economic hubs within the region. Pakistan has been working towards all four aspects with unity of purpose and synchronization within the various components of national security. We had realized that unless our own house is in order, nothing could be expected from the outside. 
Now, after having overpowered the menace of terrorism and tide of extremism, we have begun to work towards sustained, sustainable development and improving economic condition of underdeveloped areas. Pakistan Army has contributed tremendously towards this national cause by rebuilding and mainstreaming some of the most neglected areas through massive development drives besides ensuring peace and security. Our long campaign against the tide of terrorism and extremism manifest our resolve and national will. We have come a long way and yet we are a bit short of our final objective. But we are determined to stay the course. Dear participants, CPEC has been at the heart of our economic transformation plan and we have left no quarter to declare its necessity for addressing our economic woes. Our sincere effort to make it inclusive, transparent and attractive for all global and regional players with the aim of bringing its benefit to everyone. Let me also emphasize that while CPEC remains central to our vision, only seeing Pakistan through CPEC prism is also misleading. Our immensely vital geostrategic location and a transformed vision makes us a country of immense and diverse potential, which can very positively contribute to regional development and prosperity. The vision, however, remains incomplete without a stable and peaceful South Asia. Our efforts for reviving SARC, therefore, are with the same purpose. Our efforts for peace in Afghanistan and responsible and mature behavior in crisis, with, crisis situation with India manifest our desire to change the narrative of geopolitical contestation to geoeconomic integration. We are doing our bit, but a major contribution is to be made by the global players through their cooperation. I am sure that an economically integrated South Asia is much more suited to them instead of war-torn, crisis-ridden and destabilized zone. We also have a hope in the form of incoming U.S. administration, which can transform the traditional contestation into a gainful economic win-win for the world in general and the region in particular. South Asia can be the starting point for regional cooperation. I have firm belief that economic and sustainable human development can guide us into a future full of peace and prosperity. And finally, it is time that we in South Asia create synergy through con connectivity, peaceful coexistence, resource sharing to fire hunger, illiteracy and disease in start instead of fighting each other. I thank you.